It was formed millions of years ago. Coal. The energy it contains helps fuel today's energy-hungry world. More than likely, it is a coal-fired power plant, and particularly in this part of the country, in the Midwest, where Missouri is 80% of the electricity is generated using coal. These furnaces make it possible for your lights and household appliances to work at your flick of a switch. The vast majority of our coal comes from the Powder River Basin in Wyoming. Twice a day, a 140-car train delivers coal to the Ameren UE power plant in Labadee, Missouri. Clearly, uh, uh, coal is a, a significant solution for our energy needs in the future. You know, when you talk about some of the renewables that are out there now, such as wind, uh, wind, wind is very clean, but one of the problems with wind is it's not always there when you need it. But like every other source of energy, coal comes with a cost. Burning coal creates byproducts that are pumped into the atmosphere. We, we have a 24-hour continuous emissions monitors. In other words, they monitor every second of every minute of every day, and we determine what we're emitting, and we watch it very carefully, and uh, we do everything we can to minimize the emissions as much as possible. Obviously, the biggest uh, challenge that looms on the horizon for us is, is the whole CO2. There's two things you need to look at. The first is the capture of the CO2, and then once you capture it out of the flue gas leaving the plant, you need to be able to store it or you need to be able to get rid of it. We have the technology. We know how to deal with it. We know where to put it. That technology is in a proposed coal-fired near-zero emissions power plant called FutureGen. Peabody Energy, the largest private sector coal company in the world, is part of a public-private partnership to build this new generation power plant. FutureGen would use cutting-edge technologies to generate electricity while capturing and permanently storing carbon dioxide deep beneath the earth. But besides storage, is there any other use for that captured CO2? At Missouri University of Science and Technology, Dr. David Summers thinks he's found an answer, algae. In his laboratory, Dr. Summers has built a model which demonstrates his proposed solution to the carbon dioxide problem. Use abandoned underground coal mines as bioreactors. Capture CO2 from coal-fired power plants. Pump that CO2 into underground algae ponds. A modulated light above those ponds combined with constant temperatures, doubles algae content in those ponds every day. After it comes out of here, you run it into a processing plant. We extract the lipid, which is the natural oil, from the biomass. We then take that lipid and we, what we call transesterify it. You mix it with an ethanol or a methanol. That gives you biodiesel and glycerin. This process is turning algae into a biodiesel fuel. So could this be cost-effective on the commercial market? DJ Vitt, a PhD student in mining engineering, did the math. We're pretty confident that we can get uh, some pretty nice numbers on biodiesel, probably about $2.02 per barrel. Bearing in mind that one of the major reasons for doing this is to actually use the carbon dioxide which we've been generating at the power plant up the road. It's, uh, it's an excellent process. It's a biology to the rescue. <laughs> With an environmental answer, a possible solution using a unique scientific breakthrough. For the St. Louis Science Center, I'm Al Wyman.